Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you uh, to an exhibition called What the Light Saw. Uh, consists of 23 paintings that I produced this year. Uh, I want to immediately say thank you to a number of people who have made this project possible. Uh, I especially say thank you to the Queen's Council on the Arts, uh, who provided partial funding for the production of this work, as well as the presentation of it. I also want to say thank you to Edjo Wheeler of the Plaxall Gallery for showcasing it, uh, and to several friends who have assisted me along the way. Thank you to Deborah Barlow, to Mary Vengrofsky Zingat, and to Susan Wyman. So the exhibition is a, a physical exhibition as well as this uh, kind of digital presence. Uh, the work is viewable at the Plaxall Gallery um, from January 3rd, 2021 to February 7th, 2021. You can find all the information you might need if you wish to actually see the work in person, which I encourage you to do so because my work loses an awful lot of its energy if you just look at it on a digital screen. But you can find all of that information at my website, FitzgeraldArt.com, and just click on the button that says what the light saw. So this suite of work began in October of 2019. It was started out at the shed, which is a uh, off-grid building that my husband and I constructed on land uh, where I was raised, where I grew up. Uh, the work is somewhat of a departure uh, from earlier work. Uh, I've been gilding work uh, using precious metals um, inside of the work since 2006. Um, I've utilized gilding extensively because I felt that it uh, answered a need in the work for a quality of dynamism and also to reconnect it back to what ancient civilizations used gold for, which was to really express that something is sacred. And I have that feeling about energy the energy that I am interested in exploring, which is all kinds of energies. Um, I believe at the core of that, it is a sacred quality. It is a, it's a sacred thing. So usually when I was um, working prior to this suite of work, uh, the entire surface of the panel would be gilded first. And then oil paint normally was added on top of that gilding. Um, gradually, the gilding migrated to the edges of the work. Um, of the Tondo. Um, and in this suite, it exists just as a ring, a single band um, around the uh, edge of the painting. So the band really functions as a boundary. It's a boundary between the painting space and, and the outer space. Um, and the way it encloses a painting is radically sumptuous, dynamic, and pretty otherworldly sometimes. So I'm going to um, just begin by showing you um, uh, two paintings, um, which really bookmark um, the um, exhibition in its entirety. This first image is called Fog Light, Remembering Gay. Um, it's one of those paintings that is really a gift painting, uh, something that was very easily accomplished uh, with nothing re really impeding its uh, quick, quick finish. Um, I'll discuss this painting a little bit later. Um, the um, second painting is, um, let's see if I can get it to come up on the screen, <clears throat> uh, is called Fog, Mo Mouth of Light. Um, both of these paintings are just around 20 inches in diameter. Um, they were created on uh, UPO, which is a kind of new special type of material. Um, and then they are mounted on a panel. Um, the, uh, both of them, the ground is toned black um, and a layer of Venetian plaster is added with mica on top of that. Each of these paintings have their own inexplicable essence. As abstract work, they are presentational they do not represent the world in any way, shape, or form. Um, both reference specific things. They reference specific energy, light, imaginative ideas. Um, and while they don't necessarily function as a pair, the way they embrace references to the physical world and to the world of the imagination renders really a kind of ballpark um, that most of the work in this show inhabits. So there are, they, they form a pair in that they bookend uh, the show in that way. So I thought it might be um, useful to speak to, you know, not simply the how of these paintings, how they're made, but also to the numinous presence that they invoke, 
how does one get that out of the physical stuff of paint? When the paintings are being made, there are no words. There's a delicate and a determined relationship to the media, water, mica, and sometimes oil paint. It's not inert stuff. Just like a horse that wishes to be beautiful when it prances, paint also has wishes to connect with the bearer and the perceiver of beauty. This is part of an animated dialogue wherein we are connected in consciousness. All matter shares a unity of consciousness. Matter and spirit have been separated for too many years. Part of the odyssey of the language of form in the 21st century is to bridge those two poles. To be both together simultaneously or interchangeably. So this work um, is a specific work fog light, remembering gay, pays homage to a painter that I learned about a couple of years ago through a good friend. Her name was Gay Patterson. She was an incredible artist. She passed away in the middle of 2018. I'm very lucky to own one of her late paintings, and it is this work that I honor through this painting. Um, the last note that was found on Gay's work table reads, display and embody a profound awareness of the power of light. And that's what it is. Um, you know, sometimes the things we reach for in our work, the deepest things we want to express, find their way to the surface, no matter how misplaced our own efforts might be. Gay's painting deeply inspired me. It inspired me to write the grant that, you know, partially funded this suite, What the Light Saw. And to have made a painting that articulates a core idea and does so adamantly, uh, has a kind of empowerment within its actual forms. It means something. It carries meaning out into the wider world, no matter how that meaning may live beyond our capacities with words. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, give you a little walkthrough of the exhibition. Um, it's through digital photography. So again, I'm gonna just encourage that if you can to see the work in person. Uh, because the presence of artwork and form has a direct impact on our uh, visceral perceptual system. And this work is especially sensitive in that regard. Um, so I'm going to walk you through uh, the exhibition in a kind of clockwise way. We'll come into the door and then we'll go to the left and proceed. So I'm going to um, share my screen once again. Um, and give you sort of a uh, walk through um, just of what the whole gallery looks like. I guess we started in the wrong place. Now let's see if we can get this to move. Sorry about that. Now you have a little bit of whiplash <laughs> um, to start with, but the first wall to the left um, contains a slathering of work that considers the circumstances of light. And of course, what you're looking at right here is not that wall, but this is the um, title wall where uh, the singular painting uh, that inspired the whole suite uh, is, is present. So the works on the, this wall, uh, this is the wall to the left as you enter the exhibition, explore a number of uh, questions and issues. Um, what if light became lost? What if light has a sense of direction and purpose? What if it gets lost? Um, what if light engaged our sense of hearing? What does light sound like? Um, what kind of light is inside of a cave of knowing? Well, a number of artists who have explored this idea of the cave of knowing across uh, many uh, years. And where is a phantom of light? Uh, does, does light is light uh, duplicitous in that it has many um, manifestations? What do those look like um, when they are um, masquerading? Um, so th those are the paintings on this wall are mostly um, on a scale of about 25 inches in diameter down to about 17 inches in diameter. This is the back wall of the exhibition. Um, and it holds five paintings. Uh, so the shadows of this earth is at the center. 
It's flanked on the left by ocean of light and the right, on the right by what the light saw. Um, I'm of the persuasion that when we are in the presence of light, it sees us just as we see it. Uh, light, like air and breath, is mostly invisible. We see form, we see the earth, we see each other because light makes things visible. Uh, and from science, we know that light can be at once a particle and a wave, uh, depending on where you are and how you are when you are observing it. So our very observation of it changes its form. That's kind of a mysterious idea. There are many mysteries to light and probably an equal number to creating form that describes something that is something itself. I think in the end, painting is like playing with fire. There is going to be transformation, substantiation, whether a fire, whether a painting breaks free of control and creates havoc means two different things. Fire has a voice, paint has a voice. Both have utility that we seek. In the case of fire, we're happy to use it for warmth and to cook our food. Campers know the other utility of fire as well, mesmerizing hours spent watching flames consume fuel. That's an, uh, something that attests to the rich language of fire. The voice of paint is totally responsive to who, whomever wields it. It speaks as powerfully as fire and we have to be willing to come to its form unfettered. This is the right wall of the exhibition. Um, and it holds a small suite of framed pieces. These are earlier uh, from the production of the suite, so they are about a year old, produced in January of 2020 to February. Uh, they recall a number of earlier themes and ideas that uh, previous work were uh, engaged with. Um, and I think their meaning is no less duplicitous than other works that are present in the show. Uh, their forms are more redolent of the natural world. Um, you can see horizon lines, you can su see suggestions of mountains and clouded light. Um, but what I've realized through these paintings is that the very meaning of something shifts each time we encounter it. Our world is just a raging chaos. It's, it's a continuous royal of change and the pace of change shifts with scale. That's a saving grace. Having made these paintings and now revisiting them, as I'm describing them to you, I realize that they are uh, equally steeped in the roiling change that exists at all levels of our world. So I think we shouldn't be uh, intimidated by this exuberance. I think it's the sheer grace of our breathing that positions us within this royal of change and this dynamism that is our world and the light infusing everything that bears us up and always tenderly embraces us. So look, these are a few pictures that just kind of give you a sense of um, the installation itself, how the work floats across the wall, uh, the relationships that exist between the paintings, which is really a pleasure of putting a group of work together is that you get to see them in dialogue with each other. Um, the corner of a room where one wall moves into the next wall. You know, these are all interesting um, views of, uh, of, the, of the show itself. Um, and when we attend an exhibition, you, you simply don't, you know, feel that you're uh, moving in a kind of linear way because you can always turn around. You can walk across the room. You can look at one painting and then look at its diagonally opposite painting in conjunction to it. Um, and so that while the room holds all of this uh, dynamic way of looking at the work, um, I think it also, uh, you know, holds us in a, in a quality of experience. Uh, littered throughout the exhibition are poems, and you can see a couple of them uh, in this uh, shot here. Um, these poems are things that I have uh, selected to share. Um, they sometimes inspire the work but I believe also that the language of poetry uh, has a deep resonant um, voice within the voice of the visual language, um, that they, they hold hands well together. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen and um, open up another screen to share.
Um, we're going to go back and just look at a few of the individual paintings. Um, so let me press the right buttons here. So you've seen this is the, the final painting in the show when you walk uh, clockwise around the room. Um, this is called Mouth of Light. And um, I, I, won't, I don't have too much to say about that painting right now. Maybe we'll circle back to it. So this is a painting. Um, that was done uh, probably about midway through the, the suite. And it is really um, uh, a reference and it, the title is a borrowed line from a Rilke poem. Um, uh, Give yourselves to the air, to everything you cannot hold. And um, I, I feel that this painting has a very strong connection to the poem that it is named with. Uh, and that there's a kind of sense of light within the forms that, uh, you know, light is active, it's dynamic, it's uh, moving across the color spectrum often and moving across uh, a spectrum of light and dark. A couple paintings in the exhibition, uh, I mentioned earlier this idea that, that light uh, is, is self-directed and sometimes maybe it gets lost. There's two paintings that are titled Lost Light. Um, and again, it's maybe a little mysterious where titles come from. Um, titles have always been quite important in the work for me because I think they beautifully bridge a sense of poetic language to the visual formal um, language of form itself. Um, sometimes when we lack words, uh, when we come to form, form is less accessible, it's less visible in a certain way. Uh, and it stubbornly stands and stays in its materialistic uh, place. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm interested in having um, form walk across the bridge so that it's not just matter, but it, it, it becomes visible to us as um, something that's alive, that is uh, as conscious as we are. It's made up of what we label as inert materials. And yet, um, when you stand in front of these paintings and shift your head a little bit, you will see that the uh, surface changes dramatically. It's very dynamic, uh, not just the gilded rings, but as well the uh, paint inside of each painting. Um, so this painting has a more of a sense of the animal world to it. It has suggestions of wings and flight and um, motion and also a kind of watery presence to it. Um, I once heard an artist talk where uh, she talked about relating to her works and oftentimes uh, when she had finished making them, um, really didn't know what to think of them and that they were like, you know, a stranger you meet in the street and you have to you have to get to know that person. You have to have a conversation with it and explore values you share and, and meanings that you understand with one another. Um, and and getting to know paintings you've made has that same quality. Um, and so uh, you know when I discuss my own work, um, I often you know stumble on um, ideas that uh, I hadn't come across before. This painting is uh, called Cave of Knowing, and um, it does have a cave-like sense. Uh, and I like the idea that in a cave, we may find things, we may reconnect with a deep sense of knowing that has always been part of our being. Um, and so this painting has that kind of energy that draws us into the deep center of itself where uh, there are many knowings living and breathing. It's one of the paintings from the back wall. Uh, it's called This Ocean of Light. Um, all of us probably have had the experience of watching light play on the top of water. 
uh, two very good friends who often play together, light and water. Um, and certainly uh, I have spent hours watching those two in play. Um, and part of my watching also I have recognized has been uh, that actually my consciousness is playing with light and with water as well uh, as they play with one another on each other's surfaces. A lot of that is probably what this painting means. If you can come to a place where a painting might mean something. Uh, many people uh, are concerned about having um, artworks uh, interpreted and understanding um, what they're about. Um, and I think sometimes I, I do like to give clues to viewers, but I also think that part of the job of engaging with paintings is that uh, you must come to it uh, and you must, um, you know, reach for um, what the painting might have to say uh, to you directly. This painting is called The Shadows of This Earth. Um, it's the largest painting in the exhibition. It's 42 inches in diameter and ringed with 23 karat gold. Um, and while most of the uh, forms that we perceive in the painting seem to be close to the surface and seem to be light, um, sometimes it's the shadows that abs actually enable us to see anything. Um, and so that may be true in this painting. This painting is called What the Light Saw. It's fun to have a conversation with light and ask it what it's seeing. What kind of eyes do you have, light? What do your eyes see? This is one of the earlier paintings from the suite of work. Um, it's called The Field of Light, uh, and the title comes from a poem by the Polish poet um, Miosz. And uh, he is talking about a sense when he goes to a field in the early summertime and the grass has yet been cut. Uh, and he is explaining a sense of unity that he has with being in that field. Uh, it's a very beautiful poem. Um, and I think many of us have had experiences like that where we uh, enter into a kind of, um, I will use the word ecstasy, that may seem like a little bit extreme, a little bit of hyperbolic, but um, where we've had these experiences when we're in the natural world usually um, and uh, feel connected with everything, feel unified with everything and feel a kind of uh, deep joy in that experience. This is called The Little Everywhere. Uh, it was begun out in central Wisconsin and then shipped back to New York to be com completed. Um, and it's, it's kind of a, li a lighthearted comment on the everywhere-ness of the geography of our world, the wateriness of it, the forestry-ness of it, the plains desert-ness of it, um, and the kind of interconnectivity that all of these kinds of geographies might have with one another, wind blowing across and carrying grains of matter from one place to another place. Um, but I'm sure it has many other uh, connections for you as well. This is called Earth of Wonder. It is also from a, a, a phrase from a Miosh poem. Um, there have been a number of poets uh, over, uh, over the years commenting on uh, humanity's ability to burn down its own house. Um, and um, I'm thinking of some poems by um, W.S. Merwin and also by Miosh. And yes, we are very good at burning down our own house and we all are aware of the effects of climate change and what the fire of our house is producing. So whether this painting has a sense of hope or a sense of pessimism, I leave that to other people to figure out. This is called The Going Away Mountain. It's one of those paintings that revisits an idea of a long time ago and it was probably three quarters of the way through this painting before I realized what it was. The Going Away Mountain is a legendary place. It's a mountain you visit when you are about to leave 
the earth when you are about to transition out of your body. This is simply called Some Light. Uh, it was done very early in the beginning of this suite of work, and it is just a testament to the kind of newfound joy of this new way of combining material. Uh, I was very happy <laughs> to come into the studio every day and work on these paintings. So I'm going to stop sharing and uh, just reconnect with you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough. And um, please know the show will be available until February 7th. You can go and see it. I'm there usually uh, Friday evenings, probably, and certainly Saturdays and Sundays. You can send me an email with any questions you have. Um, you can get a free ticket uh, to attend the exhibition in person. We are reminding ourselves because of the COVID pandemic that we have best practices around uh, people being together. So we are all safe. Um, you may not know me. This may be your first introduction to me. So I'll just give you a very brief um, biography of who I am. I'm a mid-career artist. I've been living and working in New York City for 40 years. I was born and raised rurally, which I've mentioned several times in this walkthrough. Um, and it is the upbringing there out in the natural world that undergirds everything I do in my studio and in my artwork. So thanks for listening to me all the way through. And I hope to meet you and see you in the near future. Take care. <laughs>